Hey guys, uh, yeah, sorry it's been a while, but as promised, I said I would do an inbox review before I went back to work, which is basically tomorrow. Um, and luckily enough, this actually came through the post today. Uh, I did pre order it back with um, um, Mike Jolly and model, uh, Models and Hobbies uh, Limited some time ago, which I've completely forgotten about until he reminded me around about a fortnight ago. So thanks, Mike. Um, and it came through today. Um, it's an unusual aircraft, and I'm glad that Airfix have been the first to actually bring it out in sort of um, <clears throat> uh, injected mold plastic form, because uh, I think it's an aircraft that's been neglected on the modelling front, to be honest with you. So I'm glad that at long last Airfix have actually introduced it. And what a cracking little kit it is too. Um, I'm trying to get this to focus actually, because it's not focusing very well today. Uh, that's better. Um, so yeah, I mean it was quite a unique bomber. I think there's only one left. It's actually sitting at the uh, Royal Air Force Museum in Hendon. Um, I've seen it myself. It's quite a chunky looking aircraft. Uh, basically, it was an upgrade from the old Bristol Blenheim, uh, and they looked into getting a, a slightly um, more sort of upgraded uh, version of the Blenheim. As you can see, the tail is quite familiar. It's the same sort of layout generally. Uh, but the only thing is that it has a slightly deeper um, fuselage uh, to basically sort of keep the um, bombs uh, well and truly hidden. And obviously it was also uh, developed as a torpedo bomber specifically, which it entered service in around about November 1940 with the Coastal Command. Uh, and it was a very effective uh, bomber, uh, basically. And um, later on it was actually... Um, used out in uh, the Mediterranean during the North African campaign to great effect um, and also I think it was used out in the Pacific as well uh, chiefly in Burma uh, but it was a very sturdy bomber uh, it was loved by its crews and uh, was a very effective bomber during the Second World War um, as well as a torpedo bomber so yes and basically it was also well known for raids on the Sean Horse and Eisenhower, uh, as well as the Admiral Hipper, um, which uh, I think the commander of that aircraft, Officer Kenneth Campbell, um, and his crew won a posthumous VC for. So, uh, in fact, they were awarded. No, they, it wasn't a posthumous VC, it was they were awarded at a Victoria Cross for their action against the Hipper. So, yes, uh, it was a very, very um, sturdy and uh, well, it's one of those aircraft just a bit like the Hurricane. It wasn't really given a lot of um, attention to, um, whereas to the Spitfire was a more sort of glamorous aircraft, particularly during the Battle of Britain. And this was in the same sort of vein, really. So uh, there you go. Anyway, we'll move on and get on with the inbox review itself. As you can see, you've got a fantastic illustration of Campbell's aircraft attacking the Hippa. Um, on the front of the box are along with two options um, you've got Campbell's aircraft here and one which actually um, bombs the um, Scharnhorst I think it was or tried to attempt to sink the Scharnhorst with it on a, a, another raid in 1941 so there you go um, the kit number if you want to get hold of one of these is if I can get it into focus A04021 that's A04021 and it's in the familiar sort of red box, as it were. Uh, on the side, you've got various warnings in various different languages. It's, as you can see, it's um, produced by Hornby. And uh, you've got the box art illustration on the side. A little bit of history about the aircraft on the side there with the two colour callouts, as you can see. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we'll get on. It's quite a medium sized box. Instruction pamphlet, as you can see here. So we'll get on with that immediately. And you've got one, two bags of sprues here, as well as the decals, etc. So I'll just put that aside. And I have opened the bag up because I had a quick sneaky look at it earlier today. 
Um, so anyway, you got the as I say, you got the history um, on the top here in various languages, uh, dimensions, etc. of the kit, and other information about the actual subject itself. Um, and then the first process we go through is, as you well know, with Airfix, got all the symbols there. And the first option is actually looking at building the torpedo compartment, as you can see there. And you make various holes for where the torpedo goes. And then you've got the main wing spar there, the seat as well for the actual pilot, etc. And then obviously you've got the radio... Um, board there for the navigator on the back of the actual uh, spar um, uh, so that goes where it is and that's just showing you the fit of it and the familiar red marking etc that's then put onto the cop the actual main floor and this is just basically showing you where the two spars are lined up in degrees to the actual bottom floor as it were okay so there you go um, and then obviously you've got other parts which go on the back as well and then moving on you've got the main sort of cockpit column uh central column there which goes in Sorry, trying to get this up close actually and then obviously you've got the fitment of the actual cockpit floor again uh pilot seat that goes in as well fitted with the bulkhead which goes on to the back uh, okay for the front compartment of the cockpit then you've got the main actual control panel which goes in as well with a decal um, and obviously you've got the rear bulkhead which goes behind it. Then you've got the main central column which goes in. And then obviously you've got the navigator's seat there, or the bomb aimer's seat. And a little toilet, believe it or not. They've actually put that in there, although you're not going to see it. So, nice little added detail. Um, and then obviously you've got the side compartment here with the actual windows and the hatch where they get in and obviously the fitment of the MG machine gun which goes there as well and the hatch uh, etc. So and then it's a case of putting the interior into the right side of the actual fuselage. Okay and I must admit the amount of detail on this is amazing so yeah. And again the part of the control column goes in. Uh, never another rear bulkhead goes in and obviously you've got the bulkhead for the main tail wheel and cover etc so that all goes in you put the other observation uh, window in and it's telling you the cut one part the fuselage which you can see there as well why well, I don't know and then obviously you button up the fuselage you can put the crew in if you want uh, one pilot and obviously you've got the cover for the main machine gun there at the back uh, for the turret and obviously you've got the bulkhead for the internal bomb bay and the rear bulkhead for the rear part of the bomb bay. Wings are then fitted along with the landing lights etc. Then obviously you slide the wing onto the actual main spar so you get correct dihedrals which is a good way of doing it. And again, same with the other side, fitting the ailerons next, as you can see there. And then it's the assembly of the tail planes. Okay, you put them on the back and then the rudder on the main tail plane itself. Then it's the fitment of the interior part of the frame for the actual undercarriage, as you can see there, as it's fitted right there. So that you get the correct angle as well. So it's all very well engineered. They thought of everything here, Airfix. Then on the part, the fuselage internal frame, rear bulkheads will go on for the um, undercarriage bays there. Then you've got the fitment of the main engine assemblies, which go on, and the rear bulkhead again on the engines. Fit the engine bay on and the undercarriage bay on on both sides. As you can see there. Okay. Um, next up is to fit the air filters onto the tops of where the engines are going to go. And then fitting the old Bristol Centaurus engines in. And the actual cowling on the top of the engine. Put the two halves together. That's all done and buttoned up. Along with the uh, part of the exhaust uh, system as you can see there. And obviously it's telling you how to fit everything to the firewall, etc. Again, same process with the opposite side. And then obviously fit the engines to the main firewalls and then put the main canopy on. Then the fitment of the actual glass to the bomb bay, 
as you can see there, etc, etc, etc. And then the next process, obviously, you can have the Bombay open or closed if you so wish. I'm probably going to leave it open actually with the torpedo in it. Um, because obviously this was also a bomber as well as a torpedo bomber. Again, you got the options here of how you want it assembled. And obviously you got the option with the torpedo there, okay? And again, with the fuselage, you can have it up. Uh, with the undercarriage, you can have it up or, or down, as it were, the fitment of the rear tail wheel. This is the actual process of the assembly for the main undercarriage units, if you want the undercarriage down, which I probably will. And again, there's the fitment of them as well. It's all very well engineered and very well thought out. So well done here, Fix. And then what's the next process? Let's have a look here. Also, you've got the undercarriage bay doors which go in, as you can see there. As a little guide, as it were. Okay. And then we'll see the fitment of the wheels, which I'm glad to say they've processed a little bit of the weight on the wheels, which is good. Um, so it sits at the correct angle, as it were. Again, uh, then you've got the fitment of the last part of the undercarriage assembly, which goes on either side. And the fitment of what looks like an airspeed indicator on that left wing or right, left and right wings. I'm not sure what they were. I'll have to do some research on that. And then obviously the main rear part um, of, I don't know what that is, uh, which goes onto the rear, onto the main fuselage. And then obviously you've got some more lumps and bumps which go on the wing. Um, this is the assembly of the main turret, as it were, an internal structure, which you can see there. And obviously you put, put on the glass part of it fit that together and that's your main turret done um, and then that slides delicately uh, into the fuselage which you can see is how it should be okay so there you go and then obviously you've got the fitment of uh, the cover for the actual um, turret itself and then obviously you've got the chin gun which goes into position again with a clear part Underneath the, I think it's the left hand side of the nose, or is it the right? I can't remember. Rear facing. And then obviously you've got the assembly of the actual torpedo itself. The fitment of the torpedo rack. And then now obviously the rack to the actual bomb bay. You put your torpedo in, put the, uh, put the doors either side, and that's your bomb bay done. Then obviously you fit on the airspeed indicator on the nose. And then obviously the landing cover lights go on either side on each wing. If I can put that down. Okay, sorry about this guys. There we go. It's not easy handling this pamphlet when you've got a small camera. Anyway. Then you've got the Browning machine gun which goes on the side there for the other uh, gunner's hatch. And then the fitment of the propeller hub to the main propellers. More lumps and bumps and aerials go onto the spine of the fuselage. The propellers go on and that's your build done. Okay, now your colour call out. Uh, the first option is um, an aircraft flown by Flight Officer Kenneth Campbell, VC, and Sergeant J.P. Scott, DFM, uh, Royal Canadian Air Force, and Sergeant R.W. Hillman Wallace, Operator, and W.C. Mullis Air Gunner against the German battleship Gneisenauer. 22 Squadron, Royal Air Force and Evil, Cornwall, uh, 6th of April 1941, which is the standard sort of sky underneath colour scheme, dark earth and dark green on the top. Okay, and then the other colour option is obviously it's, um, an aircraft flown by Sergeant John Bell Rutherford, Sergeant Thomas Patrick Byrne, who was the navigator, and Sergeant William Samuel Ralph Browning, who was the wireless operator. Sergeant Anthony Duckworth Wood Air Gunner against the German cruiser Admiral Hipper 217 Squadron, again Royal Air Force and Evil, Cornwall, England, February the 1st, 1941. Now, this one is, I think, a mixture of um, extra dark sea grey and matte dark slate grey along with a black underside. So, uh, that's probably the option I'm actually going to go for. 
when I get around to building this. So, and that was on February the 1st, 1941. So there you go. So that's basically that guys. So let's have a look at the kit itself. And you'll see what a little gem this is. First sprue. Here we go. We've got the actual engines there, as you can see on both sides. Again, nice level of detail there. Again, that will come up with a nice wash. And there's your actual um, hubs which go on, and the side of the engine mountings there, casings which you can see. Again, nice panel line detail, very very precisely done, uh, very crisp and clear. Then obviously you've got your what are these. Not quite sure what these are. Mm, I don't know. Anyway, you've got your engine hubs, which you can see here. Again, there's some nice panel line detail on there. And inside, you've got some nice internal framework as well. Although unfortunately, you do have some injection marks on there, so you'll probably just have to fill them in and sand them, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but there you go. That's obviously your closed bomb bay if you don't want the torpedo on there. Again, nice panel line detail on it. And then obviously you've got the bomb bay itself right here. Again, nice level of detail on there. And there's your props and obviously your central column for your cockpit. Again, nice level of detail on there. That'll come up with a nice bit of weathering. That's one of your bulk, uh, wing spars, as it were, and bulkheads. Just trying to get this to blooming get into focus which is not easy so sorry about that guys come on and as i say you've got nice um detail with the levers there and throttle levers etc so that's nicely done okay and then the second sprue let's get this out of the bag if i can you've got Get it to get into shot. You've got your pilot there, which isn't bad. Um, again, undercarriage units, a gear bay doors, there's your torpedo, and then obviously you've got the elevators, which has got a nice stretch fabric effect on it. Very nicely done there. Obviously, there's your browning machine gun and various parts of the actual turret, as it were. And then obviously you've got your rear bulkheads for the undercarriage bays and the radio operator station and that one there as well for the wireless operator. I'm not quite sure where that is. I think that's one of the part of the actual assembly where the seat goes. So yes. Again, nice level of detail there. And these are, I don't know if they're airspeed indicators or what, uh, which go on the wings where I've got my thumb. Uh, again, some nice detail there, and this is a part of the bulkhead there, I think, and that's part of the turret ring, I'm not sure. Again, nice level of detail there, we guys. I mean, for 172nd, it's absolutely brilliant. I really, really take my hat off to Airfix. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, third sprue. Uh, undercarriage bay units and sub assemblies for the internal workings of the undercarriage. You've got your tail wheel there. Um, I think that's part of the seat assembly. Other sub assemblies for the cockpit. There's your aerials and your speed indicator. Part of the turret assembly. More internal workings, which you can see there. Again, part of the cockpit. And round here. Is your control panel, which I think is right there. So you don't really need to put your deck on if you don't want to. I, I probably won't. I'll probably just try brush it and put some gloss varnish where the panels are just to mimic the glass. There's a pilot seat and pedals and obviously a control column there. So that's very nicely caught. Uh, part of the turret assembly there for the rear turret and so forth and then there's you've got your undercarriage bay legs as well um doors sorry <laughs> get my wires crossed i don't know what am i like and obviously we're coming on to the fuse large halves on the fourth sprue and elevators again nice panel line detail on there guys if we get out the right way round 
Get a nice recessed panel line detail on there, beautifully crisp and clear. And then obviously, if I get around the other way and get it nearer to the camera, you've got your weighted wheels, which is a nice touch. Again, there's you have the fuse large half as well. Inside, you've got some nice internal framework as well, which I think is beautifully caught. So yeah, that's going to look really nice when you look into that glazed cockpit. And even in the actual rear wheel bay, that's nice detail in that as well. Um, then obviously you've got your elevators. Again, there's some nice fabric effect on them as well. And that's the main part of where your turret goes. As you can see there, where I've got my finger. So yes, very nicely done indeed. So yes. And then the final sprue, apart from the clear part, is your wing assemblies. Again, nice panel line detail on that. Nice and crisp and clear. And I love the detail in the undercarriage bay as well. So that is nicely done. So yes, and then obviously, I don't know what these are. I think this is for basically if you want the undercarriage up. So yes, but again, Nice level of internal detail on the indicator inside there, which you can see very well done indeed. I think this is going to make a nice little representation of the actual Beaufort. I'm just hoping later on they might bring out a 48 version of this, which I suspect they will. I think they're just going to try and see how well this aircraft, this kit sells first before they think of doing so. But I wouldn't be surprised in about a year's time they release the 48 version. And finally, you've got your clear parts there, which are nice and crisp and clear, and you can easily mask them off. But no doubt the aftermarket boys will bring out a um, mask set soon. So, yeah, and even on the chin gun, nicely caught as well. So, yes, there's your landing wheel lights as well. So, yes, very nice indeed. This is going to make a little gem of the kit, I reckon. And then finally, you got your decal sheet. Get it out, which I assume is produced by Cartograph, and they are not too bad. I should imagine they'll bed down pretty well for both examples. So, yes, including your stencils. So, there you go. So, that's it. That is the um, 172nd Bristol Beaufort uh, Mark 1 by Airfix, which actually, believe it or not, was officially released yesterday on the 30th of March this year um, and uh, Mike Johnny actually managed to get this in a little bit earlier for me bless him so thank you Mike I do appreciate that my friend um, yeah it's so MJ models um, MJW models and hobbies .co .uk, so look them up um, he's got quite a few offers on there. I think he's taking pre-orders for the Vulcan, which is due out, I think, sometime this month. Um, I think it's the end of this month, possibly. I'm not sure. It's all dependent, obviously, with the way the things are going at the moment, you know. Uh, so um, don't hold me to that. Um, obviously, with problems with shipping and so forth at the moment. So, yeah. But, um... That, that's another subject I might well buy later. I'm, I'm not going to buy it as soon as it's released because it's just going to sell out like hotcakes. I think I'll wait until the dust has settled, then I'll get the new retool Vulcan. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of this inbox review. I hope you like what you saw. And uh, definitely go out and get one. It's a little gem of the kit. I heartily recommend it. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. So until the next time, stay safe, keep well, be observant now. It's not a case of staying at home because obviously restrictions are being eased. But for God's sake, people, just don't go mad. You know, baby steps, baby steps, and we'll get there. Anyway, that's the end of this kit review. So until the next time, get kit crazy, stay safe, keep well, and uh, I'll speak to you guys as and when soon. Cheers.